as I'm recording this video, we don't have many details on Transformers 1, but we do know that it's going to feature this guy, who's often seen as Optimus's predecessor as leader of the Autobots. On the surface, he's noble, he's heroic, he's valiant, he's everything a leader of Cybertron should be. But he's actually a deeply flawed character, who allows his love of his home planet to engulf everything, sometimes with devastating consequences. <laughs> he's been armed to the teeth, he's had some insane almost, and in this vid we're going to look at the character's history, his relationships with Orion, Pax and Megatron, and his roles in the events that shaped the war. So make sure you're subscribed and let me know what characters you think deserve a spotlight vid. And I know you guys are all going to say Soundwave, it's coming! The version of the character most will be familiar with will be Dark of the Moon Sentinel, who, seeing that the war could drag on forever, made a deal with Megatron to sacrifice some unfortunate planet, i.e. Earth, plundering it of its resources to keep Cybertron from running out. He lied to his protege, Optimus, telling him that the space bridge he'd developed was for transporting troops rather than stealing resources. When his ship, called the Ark, crashed on the moon, only Megatron was aware of his original intentions, as he was presumed dead and Optimus took command. But the character was expanded upon in the IDW movie comics, where we're told he was believed to be the last descendant of Primus. It's explained here that Cybertron was kind of like a rogue planet that was just floating around untethered through the galaxy without a star to anchor it. But that was just one of Sentinel's problems, the main one being the loss of the Allspark, the fountain of life for the Cybertronians that had been lost to space and time. And before the war, he led both Optimus and Megatron on a search for the legendary life-giving artifact. At this stage, these two still got on, one heading the science division, the other the defense force. The other part of Sentinel's plan was to teleport in a star from another solar system to anchor the planet and give it new energy and new life. But not all Cybertronians thought that this was a good way to go. Anyway, as I said, Sentinel was obviously charismatic enough to unite the Cybertronians with this plan that would heal the planet's problems, apart from this one group called the Thetacons, which included Ironhide. They thought that the plan was nuts and that Sentinel, a false prime in their eyes, would end up destroying Cybertron. The Thetacons fought Sentinel's forces but weren't able to stop Sentinel, and more specifically Wheeljack, from teleporting a star from God knows where, which not only gave the planet something to orbit, but also energized the Allspark, allowing its discovery. With Sentinel proven right that the Thetacons dropped their weapons and merged into the fold, Ironhide becoming loyal to Optimus. After this, Sentinel wanted to hand leadership down to Optimus, which of course infuriated Megatron, so Sentinel ordered that the leadership be shared between Optimus' science division and Megatron's defense force, which over time, and after Megatron became influenced by the Fallen, became the Decepticons. And that's how the war started, with Sentinel realizing that the Allspark would need replenishing again. He this time opted to transport Cybertron to the star rather than the other way around. Harvest the star with the star harvester, and then I guess rinse and repeat with another star. But before they could, the Allspark was ejected from Cybertron to crash land on Earth. Sentinel's arc was blammoed by Starscream, triggering a series of space jumps that homed in on the Allspark signal, and even caused it to collide with the Nemesis. <laughs> which was also homing in on the Allspark, before jumping one last time, which led it to wind up here, triggering the events of the movie. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure you've all seen the movie, so I won't dwell on it too long, but basically after he was killed, his head was acquired by KSI as a base model to derive other Transformers from. In Gen 1, he was originally called Sentinel Major, one of the quintessence slave robots who competed in their gladiator tournaments to keep him amused. Now, we don't know why, but he was one of the few consumer goods bots that had weapons and could handle combat. I'm guessing it was probably the quintessence that gave him that setup, you know, maybe a little training or whatever. He watched Primer killed for rebelling against the quintessence, and it was under Sentinel's watch that the consumer bots started transforming as a form of disguise. And with this newfound ability, Sentinel defeated Trannis, the Decepticon leader at the time, and ushered in the golden age of Cybertron, before the Decepticon threat reared its head anew and, and Megatron emerged as its new leader, killing Sentinel and plunging the Empire back into war. Dreamwave's continuity specified that Sentinel was in command for the first 500,000 years of the Civil War and was respected for being a great combatant. He was a beast too, being armed to the teeth with artillery cannons, a solar charge cannon, trithelium armor, energon infused sword, and an electro disruptor, which is what uh, Mirage uses to create his illusions. Even with all this stuff though, he couldn't beat Megatron. He tried to reason with him, but Megatron killed him. IDW went into more detail and made things more complicated as they often did, uh, and introduced the concept that Sentinel was actually a Titan master called Infinitus in a large beefcake body. Now he first worked with Nexus Prime before he was killed by Galvatron, 
before joining forces with Onyx Prime. Onyx disappeared, and that's when Infinitus took on this new body and the new identity of Sentinel and set about bringing the ways of the Primes to what he saw as the sully, dirty and impure world that Cybertron had become. He was kind of right too. At this stage, the planet was under the rule of a Senate led by Nominus Prime and pretty much rendered completely ineffective by corruption. So Sentinel wouldn't manipulate and indoctrinate his way up to becoming head of security for the Senate, building his own militia in secret who served as spies and sleeper agents, strategically placed in a web of positions that could exert the most influence. The security force itself became a sort of mafia that would intimidate or even sometimes disappear anyone who clashed with the Senate. And after a few false flag assassination attempts, the Senate began imposing restrictions on the population, which was the start of that slippery slope towards, towards authoritarianism. He was impressed when a young bot called Orion Pax fought his way past the security forces to protest to the Senate about it. And that's probably why Pax was allowed to be set free. Sentinel began setting up another false flag attack to be blamed on a new faction called the Decepticons, but Orion managed to put a stop to that, but had a bounty put on his head for his troubles. It was also Sentinel that found out about Shockwave's study into outliers, Cybertronians with superpowers basically. And because he hated the idea so much, he had Shockwave's lab destroyed. And then when Shockwave confronted Sentinel about his plot to take over the Senate, Sentinel ordered that Shockwave's emotions be erased and that he be brainwashed in a process called Emperata. And so the Senate had Nominus Prime killed and Sentinel managed to become Sentinel Prime. He would grow increasingly frustrated that all his plans had to be run by the Senate as his yearning for ultimate power only grew. But now as I'm saying all this, I'm becoming quite conscious that I might be painting this guy as like an evil bot, but he's not really, he's kind of just misguided. Anyway, probably because of all the frustrations caused by all these restrictions that he'd brought in, illegal arena style blood sports started to become more and more popular and whispers of an idealistic miner called Megatron started to emerge fueled by the injustice that led to bots being sub subjected to what was, in effect, slavery, this guy's rage would be unleashed at every event and he was growing in popularity and reputation. On top of all of this, Sentinel's battle with Orion Pax's rebels was escalating too, eventually spilling out into a huge battle for a Spark hotspot, which was basically a field where Cybertronians were born. Basically, Sparks, I think, grew out of the ground fucking turnips. The kidnapping of a senator called Decimus gave Sentinel the excuse he wanted to go in and kill Megatron and all of his followers, but long story short, that backfired and led to bots rising up against Sentinel across the region of Kaon. From there, things only escalated on all fronts, and maybe Sentinel started to sense that he was losing control and suited up, donning an immensely powerful suit of armor called Apex Armor, and headed out to take on Megatron mano a mano. How Megatron survived this, I have no idea, but not only did he survive, he beat Sentinel's ass and threw him over a cliff. Megatron took the Apex armor and had it fashioned into a throne as he took control of Kaon. And there were rumors swirling that Sentinel had survived, which were quashed when his dead lifeless body was brought in. But of course, we know that this was just a suit and the real Sentinel, you know, Infinitus, had fled. Wondering why Sentinel's body didn't have a head, Prowl blamed the Decepticons for mutilating Sentinel's body and added to the fact that Megatron would also turn evil meant that the Autobots would end up remembering Sentinel as a hero that fell fighting evil rather than a kind of puritanical, um, what's the word, authoritarian that he actually was. Much, much later, Brainstorm would muse that Sentinel could actually be called the first Decepticon depending on how you frame the events. But in my eyes, Chrome Dome probably put it best when he said that Sentinel was a bot that lived badly but died well. And that's why I titled the video that. So after Infinitus fled, he started building himself a new body, but this time trying to get in sync with like the energies of Titans, something that would knock him out cold for thousands of years at a time and potentially might have sent him crazy. He would return though after the Autobots and the Cons had reached a truce when Metro Titan's burst of energy awoke him and prompted him to finish building this new body and set about readdressing the balance. He went on a crazy rampage killing 20 individual bots and flattening Ironhide security forces before space bridging to Earth. The first bot he came across was Alpha Trion, who he swiftly decapitated and Infinitus became his head, mainly to get use of Alpha's jet mode. Apparently Sentinel's other body could operate independently because that stayed behind to distract everyone. 
Then he teamed up with another Titan master called Sovereign, and together they plotted to usher in the return of his true master, Onyx Prime. Oh, and destroy Cybertron, of course. Let's not forget he wanted to destroy Cybertron. Uh, and to do this, he wanted to reawaken an army of dead Titans that lay under the surface of Luna 1, raise Cybertron to the ground, and rebuild it the way he wanted. Long story short, he died in a battle when Beak, yeah, I didn't know who Beak was either, knocked him into an engine, and he died. In the 2019 continuity, he was the pillar of the Senate, but one that would be pushed to breaking point when the Ascenticons began exerting pressure through terroristic activities and stuff, and he was eventually murdered by their Rainmakers. Looking at this sequence again, he probably could have easily beaten these three if not for the acid he was hosed with by Acid Storm. His death shook the order boss. So barring G1, those incarnations of the character were all kind of similar to each other. One that wasn't though, was Transformers Animated's version, who was a total dick. This guy was good friends with Optimus and Alita 1 in boot camp, and suggested that the three go on on some rogue mission, which ended in the death of Alita. He kind of let Optimus take the blame for her death, and forged ahead with a career in the security forces, being given the rank of Sentinel Minor, and eventually Sentinel Prime. But like the previous incarnations of the character, with his singular focus on achieving his goals often causing him to lose sight of what actually matters. Surprise, surprise. In this one though, even though he's given the rank of Prime, he still has to report to Ultra Magnus. Doink, boy! Anyway, he was also in the aligned continuity called Zeta Sentinel Prime, where he fell out with Alpha Trion over the caste system that Cybertronian society had gradually distorted into. And it was a falling out that would end with Alpha Trion exiling himself and disappearing for years. He started the experiments into Dark Energon and founded the Orbital Trypticon Station, and built himself a huge machine to guard the Omega Key, which was actually Omega Supreme, so not sure it actually needed defending that much as well as the core of Cybertron itself. But anyway, Sentinel Zeta was taken hostage by Megatron and later died from his wounds. Anyway, I'm really intrigued to see which way they go with this character in Transformers 1. No matter which way they go with it, it'll mean an extra layer of complexity. Like we have our good guy, we have our bad guy, then we have this guy who you're never really quite sure about. Or they might just make him Optimus's dad. No, this guy's involvement will probably mean split loyalties for Optimus, maybe some underhand backstabs, and potentially a pretty mature tone. They're gonna make him his dad, aren't they? Anyway, make sure you're subscribed. Coming up on the channel, I'm ranking the Transformers supervillains. I'm looking at all of the horrific things that have happened to Optimus Prime. I'm doing a vid on all the bots that have led the Decepticons apart from Megatron. And I've got that spotlight vid on Soundwave. And you know what? I have noticed a few interesting things about this guy. But for now, please get out of my head. And thank you very much for watching and I will see you very soon for the next one. Cheerio, bye.